Edition Church of the Triad. Glad to have you for our Wednesday night service. And had you been here live and in person, you could have enjoyed our uh, Notte Italiana and had our homemade spaghetti, meat sauce, hallelujah, Alfredo. See, if you come to Expedition Church, we treat you right. Hallelujah. So we'd love to have you join us here at Expedition Church of the Triad in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. And if you're from the area, obviously, you know, that's just a matter of where lines are to say we're not Greensboro because it's, it's all around Pleasant Garden. Hallelujah. All right. We've been talking about past few weeks. I wasn't here last week. I was at Raymond Ministerial Association, Southeast Region. Hallelujah. Carrying on the mandate of Dad Hagen to go teach my people faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, so Brother Bill ministered. But before that, we were talking about maintaining our faith and, um, you know, build, how to maintain our faith. And one more thing before we get really deep into this, uh, don't forget, uh, let's see here, this weekend is the 11th, 10th, 10th, 17th, right? Or this weekend is 17th. This week is 17th, the 24th, and then Shekinah kind of Glory. I think. 24th, no, 24th, first, Shekinah kind of Glory. So we got the, the 10th. 24th, 17th, 24th, Shekinah Glory. I'm losing track of it now. I done got myself mixed up. Four weekends. Okay? So, <clears throat> the fourth weekend for now, starting with the 17th this weekend, the 24th the following weekend, the first after that, and then Shekinah Glory is here on that 6th the Friday night. Okay? So, we are right, right at four weeks out right now. Okay, get people in here. I'm telling you, we're believing God for the supernatural outpouring. They're believing God for that. It's going to be ministry and, and song, word, ministry to people by the Holy Ghost, uh, laying hands on the sick, getting people filled with the Holy Ghost, ministering to people physically for healing and, you know, all kind. I am just telling you, young people need to be in here and uh, it will transform their life. Uh, Jesse and Shannon were Shekinahites when they were out in Tulsa. They, all, the, all, the, all the people who went over and helped their ministry, uh, they were called Shekinah Nights, Shekinah Heights or whatever. The SG kids. But you say, you say Shekinah Heights or something at one time. Yeah, Shekinah Heights, okay. Or the SG kids. And, um, of course, we, they already knew Shekinah Glory when they went to Rama, because they've been in our church so many times before that. So they were automatically in the, in the, on the team. All right? So... You will want to be here. It's just going to be a special time. There'll be things done in the spirit you won't even understand took place at the time that will be a lifelong event. All right? So I command you in Jesus' name, bring people in here. Amen? Drag them in. Drug them and put them on the front row. And when they wake up, they'll be in the middle of service. Okay? That's a joke. Kind of. All right. So it's kind of glory's coming, praise the Lord. And then the last Sunday of October is going to be Down East Barbecue Fried Chicken Sunday. You hadn't had that, have you? No. All right. It's smack your mama good. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. Hallelujah. How many can agree with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad y'all are excited out there. I'm, I'll enjoy doing that every year. All right. Um, as we said back a few weeks ago, you know, we're admonished from the Word of God to consistently be in remembrance of the things we've learned, okay? So we were talking about maintaining our faith, uh, we maintain the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. I mean, it's, it's so important. It's so easy, as you know, uh, Paul wrote in Hebrews, that we're not to let them slip. And so I remember we talked about remaining teachable, um, which is kind of where we were. I think we left off. We may have segued a little bit to my last point, which I'm going to go back and, re and recover if we did. Remaining teachable. Remember we talked about the importance and the value of listening to those who are older than you in the Lord. Submitted with a teachable spirit. Okay? We have to have a teachable spirit. Okay? Um, you don't know everything. I don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. But we have to have a teachable spirit. Okay? And so... Um, we talked about that. Now, and I'm not going to keep you very long tonight. We'll talk about this last point. 
I thought she was laughing. But I said, I'm not going to keep you very long tonight. Oh. <laughs> Proverbs 27, 17 says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so as a man sharpeneth the, uh, his, the countenance of his friend. The value of fellowship with like-minded believers. <clears throat> One of the things we have to do in order to maintain our faith is to stay around people of faith. Okay. You cannot kind of go, well, I did that Pentecostal charismatic thing. Or I did that word of faith. Now I've moved on. Yeah, and every time I see people move on, they move on away from faith. Okay? They, they, they lose that perspective because they start filling the life up with people who are, who are in many cases, anti <coughs> the, word, the, the Word of God, that Word of faith. They don't believe in confession. don't believe in, you know, the power of the Word. They just, you know, they're sovereigns in many cases, sovereign, just pure sovereignness. And what sovereign teaching basically is, is everything that's happening is happening because God had a reason for it. Okay? Um, your child walks out in the road, gets run over by a tractor trailer. God had a reason. He knows best. Okay? And um, there's a purpose behind it. He wanted to teach you a lesson of some kind. He wanted to um, work some greater good out on you by killing your child. And that's just... Ask nine. That's about the best word I can come up with it. It's, it's stupidity on steroids. All right? That's not God. That's not his character. That's not his nature. So he's going to kill your child to make you better. I mean, he can't make you better without killing somebody. You know, and too many people go around, you know, I, I don't know why the Lord put, you know, cancer on me. But, you know, he knows best. Well, number one, can, can, cancer is not from God. Sickness, disease didn't come from God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is a satanic, demonic oppression. Okay, and that doesn't necessarily mean because you got a cold last week that you got a demon. But sickness is in the earth through satanic oppression. It's a perversion of God's original plan. What? Health. I said health. And so I know, of the, I know people and, and people that uh, walked in, in places with the Spirit, with the Word of God, with the Word of faith, that for whatever reason or whatever in their life, they uh, made some different turns. And now some of them don't, aren't in church. Some of them don't go to churches that preach like that at all. Don't even, I mean, you know, um, that kind of thing. Have rejected, for the most part, all of that. What? They hung around people who didn't believe that. Okay? You can't. You can't run with people who believe different than you and expect to maintain your position. It won't work. Then what do you mean run with people that... <coughs> All right. You're a born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, Bible-toting, demon-casting, hand-laying on, confession make a believer. <coughs> you can't go spend all your time with somebody who is so sovereignist that you don't even know if you're saved or not. Okay? Primitive Baptist. You don't know if you're saved. When you find out, I guess, when you die. Close your eyes. You find out if you really were one of the ones that got saved or not. And God chose that, and you had no choice in the matter. And I, my question to them is, why do y'all have church? Why, why preach the gospel? Because if they're going to get saved no matter what, and they can't get saved no matter what, why are you preaching? It's stupid. Well, you can't hang out with them folks all the time because they'll, they'll pull you down. 
Now, it's, I mean, I understand ministering to people and sharing the truth with people and trying to get light to them, but that can't be your runaround crowd because they'll take faith right out of you. They'll always have the yeah buts. Are you here? And the last thing we need is more buts around. I mean, every time something, yeah, but. Well, you're working to build your faith. You don't need people taking it out of you. So we, we need to be around people of like precious faith. When the apostles were whipped and beaten, they went into their own company. And they in one accord prayed. It means they were all in agreement with how they prayed. They weren't praying over here, Lord, <coughs> Lord, we believe that you will deliver us and bring us out with a strong hand. And the person over here is going, oh, God, why we don't understand the reason you put this on us. But if, you'll if, we, if it's your will, deliver us. Well, they're not one accord, are they? Why? One's believing that they, are, and that they are to be delivered. The other one ain't sure, and you're not in agreement. Quarterback and a receiver. Quarterback calls a play. Receiver's supposed to go down the field, do a slant to the middle, and then break back to the right corner. Okay? Call that play. Everybody's supposed to be what? On the same page. So, quarterback drops back. Receiver goes down the field. Breaks, does a slant to the middle. Quarterback releases the ball, waiting because he's supposed to break and go over here. And the quarterback throws the ball over here, and the, old, and, and the receiver kept going straight. He didn't break back to the corner. So everybody on TV is going, what an idiot quarterback. <coughs> he just threw an interception. To nobody over there. <clears throat> well, in football, it's timing. You release the ball before that guy ever makes his break. And then when the guy doesn't make his break, the only thing that's going to happen is there's going to be some free safety sitting out there going, <laughs> pick six. <laughs> you know, he's wide open. And everybody's, what a bum. That's sorry quarterback. We need to get a new quarterback. It was a stupid receiver who didn't make the right turn. He didn't break what he was supposed to. Hello? They weren't in unity. Therefore, it fell apart. When you start taking your life, when you've learned what the Word of God says, and you've been feeding on that, and you've been, you know, going to a church like that, and all of a sudden something happens and your widow feeds on you get hurt. And you have to wind up to somewhere else because those people over there hurt my feelings. I'm so dead. Put your big boy pants and big girl pants on. Let's go. Hello. Somebody's going to hurt your feelings at some point in time. I mean, they even got songs out there. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. I forgot who sang that, but it's an old one. Okay? But they're going to go, go to a church where they really love people and don't believe anything. They're unbelieving believers. They don't believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. They don't believe in the word of faith. They don't believe in making confessions. They don't believe that God heals. They don't believe that God delivers. They believe everything that happens in your life, God had a reason for it. But you're going to go hang out with them because you get with your old feelings. And then when you pray and you get sick and you need help, they're going to pray, if it be thy will. Well, say Jesus prayed that prayer. Go back and read the context. Of Jesus praying that prayer. He did not pray that prayer over somebody getting healed, over somebody getting delivered, over someone having their need met. That prayer was prayed three times in one place on the same night for the same purpose. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he was about to go to the cross and he said, and he prayed even so much that like drops of sweat. I mean, blood coming up from his sweat. What it was was he was in such, was the, the moment was so stressful that the, the capillaries in his forehead uh, burst, little, the little ones, and mixed in with the sweat. And it looked like blood coming. Well, it was blood, but it was just like, you know, 
from that, the stress. And he's praying about going to the cross and bearing the sin, becoming sin for us. And in that moment of, of that prayer, he prayed, you know, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. Wow. And, and remember, Jesus is the only one who could carry that, drink that cup. Jesus is the only one who could go to the cross because he was the only spirit clothed in human flesh that was sinless. From the fall of Adam throughout the rest of time, every man was born into sin. So no man could redeem man. Cool. He was already understanding himself. He couldn't redeem himself. His blood was tainted blood. Jesus' blood was precious blood. It was sinless blood. He was a spotless lamb. Remember, in the Old Testament, the lamb that was to be offered had to be a spotless lamb. Couldn't have a blemished lamb. It's an allegory. The lamb that was to come to take away the sin of the world had to be spotless, sinless. So Jesus came sinless. Okay? And in that that great moment between heaven and earth and hell, really, where he was about to be made sin for us who knew no sin, the weight of that moment in Gethsemane, he was praying, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. This is called the prayer of consecration and dedication. He was consecrating and dedicating himself to the will of God, even though it was an anguishing thing to do. This is the only time he said, if it be thy will. Okay? He didn't go to Lazarus' tomb and say, Father, if it be thy will, bring Lazarus forth. What did he say? Father, I know that thou hearest me. Thou always hearest me. Lazarus, come forth. He didn't say, if it be thy will. I said, he didn't say, if it be thy will. When he raised the young man off the briar at the funeral procession, he didn't say, if it be thy will. He raised him up. When he cast out the devils, he didn't say, if it be thy will. Yet 99, well, I won't say 99% now. Let's just go with 89% <laughs> of the church world will pray, if it be thy will, over any circumstance Instead of knowing, and, and let me say this, I won't say this with, I try to say this with humility, but it's the truth. If you are trying to pray about something and you're at a point where you're going, if it be thy will, you just told me you hadn't been reading your Bible. Because if you're reading your Bible, you will know what his will is. What do you mean? You will know that he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. He's the Lord, our physician. Amen? Isn't that right? So as you study the Bible, you'll find, listen, that's not, a, that's not necessarily a criticism. It is a locator. If you're having to pray out things, if it be thy will, in, in regards to things he's promised in the Word. Now, are you, am I supposed to go to Africa? That's a prayer of consecration and dedication. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. If it's your will, I'll go to Africa. Now, we don't have scripture that says, thou shalt go to Africa. There's not one that says to uh, uh, Penny, thou shalt go to Alaska and win the Eskimos. Now, the Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel. Okay. But that is, you know, the whole church doing that mission. There are those that are sent. There are those that, that support you have to pray that out and commit to what, you know, Lord, if you want me to go, I'll go. But your will be done. You may just want to go do something missionary-wise, but you're not called to that. You might be called to support the local church that supports the missionary. Okay? And so those things you pray out. Now, the problem with getting around people who don't believe that you can have specific answers to specific problems based on what the Word of God says, if you are in that place and you say you're in a church like ours and you're here four, five, six, seven, eight years and your wealthy don't get hurt and you run over to unbelieving ministries of the, of the life of faith, ish, 
and you're in there, and a crisis arises in your life. Well, I remember being in that church where they preach, and but you're, you're the, and you but you go to your new buddies. And say, you know, I just got diagnosed with a mass on my kidney. Let's pray. Lord, we, we desire that you minister to our dear brother or sister who's about to lose their kidney, that they can keep the other one so they don't die. But nevertheless, not our will but yours be done. It's like Norval Hayes and the, bat, and the uh, blackboard in his church. Jesus, don't ever let my name get on the chalkboard of the such and such church. Everybody got under that. That was, that was just a, a lifetime of growing up in the church and seeing name go on and name came off and then there's a bulletin. This week we will have a memorial service for so-and-so. You know, the last name off the board. That may, may, may even come up with sections on their bulletin that said last name off the board. Because <laughs> they're going to bury them. Y'all hear you going home. Man, I'm telling you. If I have something serious going on in my life, I watch who I ask to pray. I'm serious. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't get on Facebook and tell the whole planet, need prayers. You get the little hands. Everybody's putting their hands up. I'm going to know, what are you praying? Because if you're not, I don't want no unbelief over my life. Are you here? I'm serious. Okay. Okay, you love Jesus and you're going to go to heaven. And if you way you believe, it might be quicker than some of us. All right. I don't want you praying for me if you're going to pray unbelief. And I can't say pray in tongues because you don't believe in that either. You know? I mean, there's some folks that you can kind of look at and say, look, just pray in tongues. That way the Holy Ghost can pray it, and you won't get in, in there with your uh, weird doctrines, and he'll just pray the right stuff. But I'm, if you don't believe what the Bible says, if you're going to pray me into the grave, I got this one. All right? I can get that done. I know some people who can pray heaven and earth together and get answers and believe in faith and stand with me in faith and not bury me in the process. Y'all here, you go home. So it's so important that as you're building your life of faith that, and to maintain that life of faith that you hang around people of faith. Amen. I said amen. Well, say so that's kind of arrogant, isn't it? Yeah, did y'all ever notice when Jesus was dealing with one person one time? Um, Actually, it was their eye. They were blind. And um, he was with the people. He took him out of the city. Why? He had to get him away from the unbelief. He couldn't leave him there with the unbelief. It would hinder what he was trying to do because there was so much unbelief. So he had to remove the person away from the unbelief. Amen. Amen. And got him healed. Praise the Lord. Unbelief will mess it up. There's one place in the Bible, we've quoted this recently, but um, he, was, he, was, he went into a place and ministered to people, and he could there, over Mark, do no mighty work. Save, that's King Jimmy for accept. He laid his hand on a few sick. In the Greek, it really means this word sick is a derivative. And it's, you know, listen, you've got voices, you've got moods, you've got tenses. Uh, you got all this stuff, okay? You got the ARTs, and you got the future, press, press, past, present, all these crazy grammatical things on the Greek. So the word sick is, is one of those forms, and it means sickly. It's very sickly, you know, a few elements here and there. So it says, let's say he lays down a few sickly folk and heal them, literally meaning uh, a few folks from minor elements. Okay, had, had, had colds, stomach flu virus or whatever. He could there do no mighty work except he laid his hand on a few sickly people with minor ailments and healed them. You know what the next verse says? And he marveled because of their unbelief. 
he marveled. Uh, Luke, maybe over six or five. <coughs> uh, he, we don't have the stuff, Bill, Bill Stan, so we don't have the camp, this stuff running. He marveled because of their unbelief. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the second person of the Godhead, who had the spirit without measure, could that didn't say he wouldn't, said he couldn't. The second God manifest in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. Could that say he wouldn't, said he couldn't do a mighty work. And the next verse tells us why their unbelief. Unbelief will undermine your faith. It will undermine the atmosphere of faith. Amen? That's why it's so important to be around people of faith. Because if you're not, it will pull down on you. Amen? It's hard. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. Amen? If two of, two of you agree as touching any one thing, I will do it. What if you're not in agreement? Again, we go back to our scenario. What if you've got the person who's believing to be healed and the other person believing that God may have put it on you? And y'all go pray about it. Well, guess what? You're not in agreement. They're, they're home praying, Lord, speak to them and tell them, you know, that you'll, you'll reveal to them why you put it on them. And they're over there praying, Father, I thank you. The Word of God says, by, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You're not in agreement. You're praying two totally different things. And you're going to get intercepted. Hello? Because the receiver's over there, and the ball's over here. Well, what's the receiver? Faith is your receiver. It receives the answer. Amen? So you want your faith at the point where the answer comes. Can't have it over here. You can't have it over here mixed all up with believing and not believing. You're on the wrong route. It's got to be what it's supposed to be. So this doesn't mean that we disdain, we don't like, you know, we can't have dinner with somebody who don't believe like us. They can't be your pals. They can't be your hangout group. They can't be who you fellowship with. You got to have people. Well, we have so many things in common. In the natural. But this is spiritual. We need to be following after what, what we have in agreement in the spirit. Amen? Well, you know, we're buds and, you know, I go hang out with them. And, now, I don't drink because, you know, you know I don't, I, you know, pastor said that drinking is wrong. And, you know, what, listen, you know, that's a big debate now. I mean, 30 years ago, if, they, if you got caught drinking in a Pentecostal church, they tar and feather you and run you out of town on a rail. And I just ordered a barrel of tar and some feathers. Okay, everybody, you know, now it's very accepted and whatever. But here, I'm, I'd say this. You, you've been in a church that doesn't believe in drinking, don't think it's good. You know, and listen, the Bible says wine is a mock or strong drink. It's a, I think causes folly, something like that. Um, you know, Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, drink a little wine. Didn't say daily, three times a week, three times a day, you know, until you finish the whole bottle. For your stomach's sake, for your medicinal purposes. You know. So I could go down the road and say, look, I could, I could show you from Scripture. It's not profitable, at least. All right? But you go hang out with all your old buddies, and they're all going out to the pub want you to be with them, and they're drinking themselves under the table. Amen. And then, you know, then you're going to have them pray for you, and they don't even go to church. But they're your old buddies. And we have so much fun together. Now, I, I never really told my family a lot about my non or my uh, BC days. Okay. Okay, um, I had a period there that I um, indulged in excess, all right? And um, I can tell you, you would not want me praying for you, okay? All right? 
But you want to hang out with your buddies because y'all went to school together. Y'all y'all beat y'all y'all uh, vacation together. And next thing you know, you're hang, you're wanting to spend more time with them than you are people that you don't really like their personality. I mean, y'all just don't click. You know what I'm saying? You ever have people like that? Guess what? You're gonna have them in the church. When you come to church, you're gonna have people that you don't click with. You're not going to want to go on vacation with them. Okay? They might be a video game nerd. My son-in-law. But we love him anyway. You said it, I didn't. Truth. Okay. No, I, we, we love Cap, okay? Um, he, he is multifaceted. He does have other likes in life besides a video game. The Carolina Hurricanes, of which we can have so much fun together with. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> and they scored. Can't wait to hear those words. <laughs> and then the other team scores. And so-and-so scored. But when the Canes scored, and they scored. Um, you don't have people in this church. As this church grows and more people come in, you're going to have people come in who are quirky. As far as you're concerned, they might think you're quirky. Okay? They might. They might look over at Daniel and go, that's that quirky dude. I mean, he's not my cup of tea. You know? I really don't want to go out and eat with him after church. Okay? But, He's a man of faith, man of the Spirit, walks in the Holy Ghost. You can learn to hang around people who spiritually are in tune with you, who are spiritually in the place that you want to be, or, or you are, and you're sharpening each other up. And it would be more profitable you hanging out with your old buddies who ain't even close to where you are, who don't believe anything like you believe. But y'all had, you know, old good times together. You know that? I am. Um, I got a lot of old high school friends. I like them. So, you know, if I, if I can, we go have, you know, if I'm in age and they're around, we like to go to bums and eat and talk and, and have fun together. That's all good. Okay? There's a lot of people I'm not just going to go hang with all the time. Because they don't believe what I believe. Okay? Good people. Some of them, some of them are good Christians. They're not Pentecostal. Okay? They don't believe in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. Matter of fact, a lot of them say that, you know, you're laying hands on the sick, sick and getting them healed by devils. <laughs> you know what they said about Jesus? He casted out demons by the prince of demons, Beelzebub. Remember, that's what they told Jesus. They said about Jesus. So, I like them. If they walked in tonight, I'd go out and have coffee with them afterwards or whatever and, and remember or have reminisce but I'm not going to live my life trying to hang around people who believe differently than I do I'm not going to make every chance I get to go hang around and, and, and forego hanging around people of faith like me why? because I want to increase in my faith I want to get stronger in it I want to develop deeper Amen. And I don't want to slip. You ever been someplace in your life, and you, you know you 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 know all of it. You heard it all. And uh, something comes up, and your first response is not a faith response, but then somebody around you went, "Well, brother, let's just believe God." And you're almost ashamed at yourself because that wasn't your first response. And you realize I've let some things slip, but. But because you were hanging around people of like precious faith, they kind of, without being, without being jerky about it, without, maybe not even knowing what they did, snatched you out of that place and made you go, oh, you know, you're right, and got you back on track. I've had it happen. I've been in meetings where somebody was preaching, you know, and they said something, I'm thinking, eh, eh, eh. and then, um, you know, 
know, I'm thinking about one thing, and all of a sudden they say, and uh, you need to stay in faith. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But then, you know, if you're not careful, you'll be watching some on TV, and they'll be going, God has a reason for everything as you're going through your life, and you're thinking, well, that's not right. But, you know, all of a sudden you're letting it all slip. It's important. It's important to, to find out who you're hanging around with and what kind of people you're with all the time so it can keep you strong in faith because your faith, hello, your walk of faith and your faith in God and believing the Word of God is important to the people you're going to be able to minister to. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. You have a calling. Amen? You are unique. God made you um, special. I'm going to feel like T.L. Osborne right now. God made you special. <laughs> if you ever saw T.L. Osborne, some of y'all never heard of T.L. Osborne. I believe Tommy Lee Osborne. All right? Um, he would, he would preach like this. You're called. You're anointed. You're special to God. <laughs> huh? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I, I got to be with T.L. Osborne in, in meetings and stuff a number of times. Loved him. <clears throat> he inspired me in my faith. That's what we're talking about. Being inspired in your faith. Sharpening iron. Okay? Now, look, you don't want to be a um, stainless steel or tungsten steel sword trying to rub up against aluminum. You know, just cast that. Not even real good aluminum. You're not, something ain't going to get sharpened. And it's going, and it's, the steel, the tungsten is not going to get sharpened, and the other is going to get destroyed. Okay? We want to be gathered together with a company that will inspire us. And you're going to find, you may find in our church, you may go, well, Bill Bailey's a trekker. I don't care about sci-fi. But Brother Bill, okay, he's, he's, he is a Star Trek guy. And so they used to call them Trekkies, but that said they're too sissy, so they started calling them Trekkers. They have Trekker conventions. They all dress up in their Star Trek uniforms and show up. <coughs> Brother Bill used to have an SUV that had the Starship Enterprise painted on the sides with the warp speed lights coming off the back end. Yeah, that's, that may not be your cup of tea, but he's full of wisdom. He's full of faith, knows the Holy Ghost, and I'm telling you. So, they went, now that's quirky. That's, 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 that's kind of strange. Yeah. And he loves his Star Trek stuff. But you get him over and talk about faith, he'll inspire your faith. It'll be nothing but faith. It won't be anything else but faith. And if he's watching, I'm not, I'm not calling you weird. You might think he is, but I, I understand him. I think it's cool. But... There's people, I've, I've got, I know they're going to have people who, do, who could care less. There's going to be people who would not even turn around and pick up a penny to get a video game that Cat likes to play. Okay? They may not have interest in the natural. But we all have the same interest in the spirit. And the, when we learn that and realize that and we come together, we strengthen each other in faith. And then what happens? Then we are able to do and to carry out our mission and our calling as a church to reach the nations, to do what God called us to do. Because you're not coming in here dragging the weight of the unbelief and the disbelief and the whatever of, of, the, of people out there who don't believe anything. You're strong and you're coming together and our mutual faith is energizing each other to new heights and in new places in the things of God. The more we do that, the higher we go. And the higher we go, the more we're able to see and do for the kingdom of God. To build our new church. Where? Right here. Not here on the spot that this is. We'll move over a little bit. 
We're not tearing this down to build a new church. Okay? Because we've got a place to meet while we build a new one. Remember what said Sunday? That's our hope. That's our vision. A new building. Why? To house the, why? The why is to house the people that are coming. The groups, the, the numbers of people that are coming. We can't put them in here. We can't have enough services in here. I can't preach that many times a day. Okay? So we've got to have a new building to put all the people in. How? We're going to be soul winners. How are we going to do that unless we are in, come on, faith, but what, what, what do we all have to be in? Agreement. Agreement. We all have to be in the same place so that when the ball's thrown, we're in the right place to catch it. Okay? That's all important. Okay? That's a mission. We got a mission. We got a purpose. We're destined. We have a destiny as a congregation. And it's our faith in God and our understanding and agreement of how to live by faith, walk by faith, talk faith, believe in faith. That's going to cause us to be able to do what we're called to do and not play church in the process. Not come up with the latest, greatest marketing scheme but a life-changing, transformative encounter with the Most High God that will radically change people's lives. Amen. I'm not interested in the placard on the table and then getting the real, fake stuff. You know, the placard, you've seen them? Piece of cherry cake, cherry cheesecake on your table. It's, I mean, it's a wedge, about a fourth the size of a regular cake, about that tall, your New York-style cheesecake. The whole can of thank you cherries over one slice, the juice just dripping down. Anybody hungry yet? I mean, I'm not that other lot. Make you speak in tongues, all right? And then you order it. It comes out. It's about that tall, a little bitty wedge like this, and got one cherry up there. And you're thinking, I ordered that. Well, that's just, that's just a, you know, symbolic. They even passed a law called the Truth and Advertising Act. You technically are not supposed to be able to do that and give them this because you lied. You presented one thing and got another. I'm not, we're not interested. We are not interested in having a church built by image and by, by techniques. We're interested in building a church that the power of God changed their life. The power of God radically moved in them. The power of God gave them something they could not get anywhere else. And their life will never be the same. Amen? Never be the same. And their faith is not in man but in God. Hello? We get there by being in the same company by coming together, by growing together, by walking in faith together, by believing the same thing. And I'm not talking like cultic. You know, you're cult. I'm not saying don't ever fellowship with anybody else. But I am saying your main place, fellowship and spiritual intimacy, is with people who believe like you believe. So that when you start talking and you start sharing, they're going to come up with faith in that moment. You know? Well, I just went to the doctor and I was told such and such. That's all right, brother. We're standing with you. We're believing God. The Word of God says such and such, such and such. And the Word of that, and I believe. And can you, we can agree with you. What are you believing for? Well, I mean, well, well, well I'm believing that I'm to heal the Lord. We can agree with that. And we go after it. We go after it. Instead of, I'll pray for you, brother. And walk off and don't pray for you. I was in the grocery store line one day, and um, the guy behind me started talking. He, I mean, he started singing all the woe is me's, okay, um, how bad it was. I said, you know, he's so sick or something. I said, well, um, I'll pray for you. He said, please do. I turned right around, took my hands, put it on his head right there in the line. And I said, in the name of Jesus and when I got to anybody, amen. You know, everybody, you look around at people. <laughs> you know, see, a lot of times we courtesy pray for you. 
What do you mean? I'll pray for you. And you say, thank you. And you go your way, and you never think about them again. And you had the opportunity at that moment to put your hands on them, because Jesus said, you'll lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. <coughs> Instead of doing that, we go home and throw up a little courtesy. Well, Lord, and, and that guy I talked to tonight, and, uh, just show yourself real to him. Or and we just kind of, okay, I did my responsibility. And you really didn't engage in the spirit to get them something that would fix their life. Amen. We got to become so radically charged with our faith and our believing God and our what we have to give. Amen. That we can't stand to be around unbelief. <laughs> All right, uh, Brother Copeland, a number of years ago, um, back early early years of his ministry. Was in some place. I mean, he was a speaker, but he went to charge of the worship and all that. And somebody got up and sang some song right before he came to the pulpit. Now, the worst thing in the world is to try to follow a song of unbelief. You got to fix everything before you can preach. I'm not joking. I've been there. Somebody sing a song, you're thinking, you can't leave me with that. And um, they sang some unbelieving hymn. Not all hymns are unbelieving, but some of them are. I mean, through the mud and through the flood, but everybody through the blood. I mean, you know, I mean, the woe is me's. You know, Pass me not, Lord Jesus. Pass me not. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Pass by here, Jesus. Amen. Kumbaya, my Lord. Remember that? Remember to see that as a kid? It means come by here. Come by here. What do you mean come by here? Is he not omnipresent everywhere? You want him to run by here. Like he's not there. All right? But Brother Copeland, somebody got up saying some unbelievable song, you know, and Brother Copeland got to the platform. He said, Sister, that song is embalmed with unbelief. Well, that snatched all the, you know, goosey, goody feelings out of everybody who thought that song was spiritual. Yep, that song is embalmed with unbelief. Well, probably didn't have her sing anymore at his conventions. But I didn't want to, you know. He's, he's tempered himself a little bit since then. Not much, but some. Okay. <clears throat> um, you can't have people, you know, like when you're in ministry, you can't have people get up in front of you and, and do things in unbelief. I've done that. I've been in services like that. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to follow that. Um, to have somebody get up in front of you and fill the atmosphere with anything but faith, it's hard. I've been in services where I had to minister, and the person that was singing right in front of me was, was singing so much out of the soul and the flesh, and there was no anointing on it, and they walked up and left you, and you're sitting there going, well, Lord, how do I fix that? You just got to be anointed enough, enough yourself to get over it because and, and turn it around because they did. They sure didn't help. You want to say, why in the world did you sing that stupid song? Don't ever sing that again. I mean, you might lose that. They might get up and leave the church. Say, so we let people get away with stuff because we don't want to lose them. Well, they ain't helping your church none. I said, they ain't helping your church none. They're hurting it. <coughs> can't let them leave because they, they get the most money in the church. Yeah, but they're hurting your church. You're hurting people's faith. You're hurting their ability to grow in God. Amen? We have to be people of faith. We have to be with people of faith. And I'm going to stop. I'm done. So I get the point? They got harped on it enough? We don't harp on it. We don't harp on it enough. We don't say it enough. We don't push it enough. We don't encourage people 
to realize that this unity and this heart we have for God and putting all this together is vital to doing the will and the mission of God. Because in the end, it ain't about you. It ain't about your, you're, you're going to heaven, you know it, you're born again, you love Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. You're full of faith in the Holy Ghost. So it's not about you. It's about the masses of lost humanity out there that need you at your best, not you sliding back into unbelief. They need you going from glory to glory and from faith to faith so that you're carrying a transformative anointing in your life, Father. Amen? Hallelujah. It's time to give. You need an offering envelope that will sit back in front of you. Give it electronically. Uh, that'll be uh, we're not inside the building tonight, but on the internet you can see uh, your PayPal and your uh, cash app um, um, instructions or hashtags, whatever they're called. Ca cash app is called cash tag, and uh, PayPal is called just your, your, your whatever, PayPal at, um, I mean, whatever your thing. Oh, Expedition Triad at PayPal, or just expert. what is it? it so it's give at expeditiontriad.org. That's right. Okay. That's attached to our PayPal account. I can't keep up with it. Click on give. Expeditiontriad.org backslash give. Dot org give slash give. All right. Hallelujah. Father, we bless the people as they tithe and give in the name of Jesus. Thank you. They're blessed. They walk in abundant victory with you in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Be sure you mark your calendar for October 6, October 7, and October 8, um, 2023. That's about four weeks away, about, hallelujah, Shekinah glory will be with us, and you will want to be, and there's be ministry in music, ministry in the Word, and ministry in the Holy Ghost to people through, for healing, for deliverance, for coming to Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. All kinds of marvelous and wonderful ministry will be taking place, and you will want to be there. So October 6, 7, 8, <clears throat> Friday and Saturday night, 7 o'clock, Sunday morning, 1030, here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.